friends, it's Allison. Welcome back to AJ's Inspired Life. I am making another handmade journal slash card holder today. I know I've made them before, you guys, um, but I absolutely wanted to make another one. Uh, I've been saying I was going to, and again, I just thought I'd bring you along. The process is a little different each time, and I'm enjoying um, kind of figuring it out. So uh, this is not my idea. Again, I have made a few of them, and um, my idea, inspiration, came from Sweet Elizabeth over at Never Hopeless. It's a handmade journal. I mean, it could be a journal. It could be any sort of book you wanted, but I am going to use it as a card holder. So uh, lots of people make handmade journals. I've made multiple now, and I have many people who have taught me. So this is not a tutorial. This is just a walk along with me in my journey. So, and catch up a little bit and chat. So the first thing I wanted to show you though, is that these, um, I'm pulling multiple papers from multiple different stacks I have. And I, you know, these are papers that I haven't used yet. They don't have to match. It's not a certain theme. I'm going to use this to keep all different sorts of cards not necessarily, this isn't like for happy mail stuff. This is like in my life cards. Like maybe I got a really sweet um, card at work and, you know, maybe I have one note from a neighbor or something. I don't know, like the ones you don't throw away, right? I mean, so anyway, I just thought I'd give it a try. It's worked so well for some other things, specifically Christmas. And then I made one for graduation. I just thought, you know what, maybe I will try to create a container, <laughs> for some of my cards that I have. I mean, I have boxes of them, right? So anyway, I just thought I'd bring you along. So you can see there, this is a very old um, scratch pad, scratch pad, scrap pad of paper, 12 by 12. Now I am pulling multiple sheets because I um, am also in the process of making a couple other journals. And so I am putting them in a few different piles. You'll see my hands kind of go different ways. So this process itself doesn't have to take this long and I certainly don't need all of these papers, but, um, <laughs> I giggle cause there's a little robot. I did pull the journal card page. I think you saw that. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting those up. Oh, here's another one. I'm not going to look for it in this scrap pad. Like if I'm going through my stuff and journaling, um, yeah, 180 pages in that, you guys. It's almost gone. It's almost gone. I'm super proud of myself. So here's just some more, um, you know, pads of random paper I have. And I'm going to start divvying them up into different journals that I'm making and, you know, try and use them basically. So anyway, this paper I love. It is one piece of, uh, well, I have two of them. I'm sorry, but it's, it's alone. It didn't come in a pad. I got it. I'm sure at the expo and, um, I absolutely love it. So I think I'm going to try and use it in one of the other journals I'm making, not necessarily in this card book, if you will. So I just thought it'd be fun to like, look at, I mean, we have all sorts of different papers, right? And they come at, I don't know, different times, different times in our creative career or journey and different times in our life. And sometimes we're drawn to certain, um, design elements for a while. I know I kind of get on like a kick of something and then it's like, Oh, I'm not going to use that anymore. Really look at those fun colors. So, um, I am again, trying to put them into a couple different piles. So just trying again, you guys to use what I have trying to find a way to use what I have, right? Um, and be creative in it and explore a little bit in it because it doesn't always have to be exactly what you bought it for. Or mm, maybe you change your mind and you don't want to make a journal. You want to make a collage piece or you want to make, you know, cards. Do that, right? Do that. So I say that because you can see underneath I love that wood piece. It's definitely going in one of the journal piles. This pad right here, you guys, is my current true struggle. I am, I remember buying it too and thinking it was so, so useful and like easy backgrounds. And I am like really struggling to use it. You've seen me, if you've um, been here for a bit, maybe I didn't pull one piece from that pad. <laughs> 
you've seen me try and get it out a couple times and kind of walk myself through it, if you will, I am telling you, it is a struggle. So this pad um, is another super old one with, you can see the paper as I rip it out, you guys, it is um, relatively thin scrapbook paper. So this is the sort of thing that I'm fine using it in, um, making journals, making pages, like, um, yeah. So, and again, it's better to pull it now. Like I, again, I'm not going to remember there's a piece of black and white polka dot in that one scrap pad right now. And so I'm taking some of it out and sorting it into different journals that I'm going to make. Cause I have about four of them. So, um, yeah. So I'm just enjoying like going through it and remembering like, Oh, I haven't really given attention to this in a while. And it feels kind of good to do that. So I also know that like watching someone pull paper out of a pad is not everyone's cup of tea, <laughs> but I hope that you're listening. I hope that you're creating and just sitting along and pretending like we're here chatting together as we kind of talk about our days. And, um, this is the stuff that's kind of the behind the scenes. That's like on those days that I just kind of need to come down here and process some stuff. Um, these are the sort of projects I do. I just spend some time with my paper on my desk, kind of trying to figure out, you know, what, what do I want to create or what goes where, um, thinking a little bit about not just what I'm doing now, but what do I want to do next? And so I'm enjoying kind of, you know, going through that. And sometimes you kind of come across a piece of paper that, or something, something on your desk, a piece of ephemera, a button, a patch, a, um, what did I find the other day? And I was, I was with you guys. I mean, I taped it. I don't know if it's posted yet. What did I find? Oh, I bought some stuff at the thrift store and, um, I came across a card that I bought and, um, that totally inspired me. Like I want to create something based off of that, that card. Now I only have 450 other of the same cards or the animal cards, but, um, it inspired me. And so sometimes, um, we want to use what we have, right. But sometimes also going and like finding a little gem, if you will, at the thrift store, uh, is, is kind of the kick you need is kind of the new little piece of energy that you bring back into your room that allows you to go and like pull other stuff. And, um, try a new, new way of using something you already have. So, um, that's at least, I don't know, somehow it happens for me that way. So this is just me. I know you guys, I'm actually going to let you sit here for a bit. I'm going to get through the rest of this paper pack and decide on some paper and I'll be back. Okay, so here is my giant stack of paper and you can see it's like all different colors, all different patterns, all sorts of yumminess. And now I'm going to kind of just go through them and kind of figure out, I'm going to pull a couple that maybe I missed that go maybe in a different, you know, project, if you will, and, and figure out what I want to do with these. So, um, I'm really drawn to some of these and, and I know they go with a different project. And so, 
yeah, you can see I'm going back for all those spring colors. I'm going to go ahead and just put those all together, I think, and then count. I'm not too sure. I wanted to go ahead and use up these pads of papers, and so the grays all go together. The spring florals are all going to go together. That's right. Look at that one, you guys. It's so delightful. So sometimes it's fun just to kind of go through your things and then for me, I know recently, um, as, as you know, if you've been here that I've been trying to reorganize my space a little bit, get a different flow to it. I also know that when I move things and put them in a different um, place or, um, it just allows different energy around it. Right. And I, and I either have to look a little bit different. Like I re I, um, rearrange my washi drawers, if you will, on my desk, because I was so used to just pulling the same one over and over or the same, you know, going exactly where I knew it was. And I find that if I kind of, um, I don't want to move all my stuff. We always joke about, well, when I organize, I can't find anything. That's why, because you know, your brain is so used to going to one place for things. So I don't want to necessarily like trick my brain and like frustrate it, but I do want to, um, you know, maybe allow it to see things differently. So I, I grouped a bunch of papers together. Now these papers I've chosen, this is a heavier cardstock. This is the, um, this is the paper I've chosen for the, like the cover of my card journal, if you will. And I absolutely love it. I don't know. I don't know what brand it is, but, um, I'm trying to decide between those two and, um, it's kind of like I need something kind of neutral for me and my brain, right? I just need something that I'm going to like all the time because it's not like for a season. And so one of them I felt was a little, um, whatever. I don't know. I liked one of them more than the other, right? For that, for that purpose. So here's the chosen piece, if you will. And this is how I make all my journals, you guys. I mean, literally I take a 12 by 12, I fold it in half, um, and then I fold up the bottom to, to get the, the size I want. Now I'm very, very, um, consistent in, in kind of my fold in it's very close to nine inches. You can see me measuring there a little bit. Um, and I fuss with it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but it, I'm, I'm pretty close to about nine inches on that. And then, you know, the card, the paper folded in half obviously comes to six inches. So they end up being nine by six journals, right? So I'm just uh, making sure that's a nice, clean cut or, you know, fold there. And then I do, um, kind of wedge that middle and I mark it just a little bit. I fold it. So I know what corner, cause sometimes I make mistakes. <laughs> I know, you know that I know you've been here for just about all of them. So, um, yeah, I just mark a little pin mark on there to remind me which corner I'm cutting in what direction. Um, and as much as I don't want to do this, you guys, I, uh, I know in order to get the effect I want, I need to, uh, add a spine. So I have a nice piece of cardboard, uh, cardboard here. I'm going to use pretty thick. Um, and I mean, it would be so easy just to fold that paper in half and sew some signatures in there, but I do want, um, two full signatures in there. And then I know every single piece of paper is going to have a card on it, like front and back, front and back. Right. And so it's going to get bulky. And so I do need to like have an extended spine on there, which is, is totally fine. So here's me, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And then, uh, I'm trying to decide the, the width of it is the one thing I kind of struggle with. And so like, how thick do I actually want this book to be? And I have some that, I mean, literally are like three inches and I have some that I've just made like a one inch. And so that's, that's always kind of the, I don't know, the thing I still kind of struggle with. I don't have a set thing. I guess is what I'm saying. So that was just me thinking about it. I am going to go ahead and just score this on my um, scoreboard so I can um, fold it a little bit. Yes. Yes. I, I hear you. Um, I could have scored it on my paper cutter. Absolutely. Yep. Um, but 
you know what? I have this amazing, you know, tool. So, and I got it out. So there you have it. But please don't think you need to have all of that. If you have a paper cutter, you can absolutely score on it. A lot of them even come with another tip. Um, on the blade, you get like a separate blade that is a scoring, uh, embossing scoring thing. So that would absolutely work. So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue this on. I'm double checking like sides. Do I want the flower, like which way, all of the kind of stuff. I am going to put the spine on the outside of the book. You could definitely put it on the inside. Some people prefer to do that. I tend to like mine on the outside. It adds like, um, like a design element for me that I do enjoy. And so, you know, that's kind of how I make that decision. And then I'm going to go ahead and just snip off that, uh, excess end you see there, obviously letting that tacky glue tack. And then you can see that, um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put packaging tape on this. Um, it's an extra step. You don't need to do this necessarily as long as your spine is like held in. So sometimes I use, um, like a strip from a package envelope, like, um, what is it? Tyvek. It's like a, you know, cause that's super sturdy. The packaging tape is obviously clear, so I kind of like that. So I decided to try that this time. A lot of people will put a strip of material down there. Just a little something to reinforce it, right? And I do want it to make sure that we're bound to the front and back covers. And so that's, I guess, the purpose of it also. But I do like the big, thick packaging tape. This is not super good quality packaging tape. It is definitely my role from the Dollar Tree, but it does the trick. And again, this book is not a book that's going to be like read every day or anything like that. It just needs to hold some cards, whether or not, you know, or when I go through them or I always joke with my kids and I'm like, okay, look, all of these journals, all, you know, all this stuff, when I, when I don't remember things, <laughs> You bring them to me and you, and you read them and you tell me the stories and you, right. Cause that's, that's what they're there for also, right. Is if I don't remember something and I'm going to need your help. So, um, that's what this card journal is going to be for, right? Here is me measuring my spine. You saw me take a, a piece out of my trash. Uh, this, I, I've learned from you guys, right. And, um, this is how I measure where to put my holes. Do you have to measure? Absolutely not. Okay. Is this a foolproof, perfect way of measuring? Absolutely not. Okay. But it's in the ballpark. It gets me where I need to get. Okay. So, um, I, I fold it in half. I always mark it at the top with a T for top. Um, I learned that from sweet Brook, and, um, because otherwise I and others might, um, inevitably flip that little piece of paper around and then, then you might be punching at the wrong place if you're going to punch multiple things. So, um, yeah, so you fold it in half and then I fold the ends up to the middle and then up to that mark again. Um, just that's how I mark it. So that's, that's what that little strip of paper is for. So there I am marking my, uh, where I'm going to put the holes on the book and no, they're not exactly the same. It's yeah, it's okay. This is the part that I have really enjoyed about um, crafting in that it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not, it's not meant to be perfect. And so uh, that's, it's okay. If it's a little wonky, it looks handmade. I'm perfectly amazed with that. So, uh, so there you have it. There's, there's the, the inside there. I'm going to go ahead and um, I think add more tape. I'm not too sure. I see me folding. I forgot where I left off here or if I cut that piece out, I'm not too sure. I'm just making sure it's working before I, if you saw my last journal adventure, my August journal, I completely misplaced the holes, like not even close. I marked them too. And I did not get them where they needed to go. 
So I had to work around that for August, which again is fine. And it turned out perfect, right? Because it's like a handmade journal. But uh, <laughs> for this one, I think I'm double checking just a little bit. So there is my um, chomp, chompadial, I think. Um, it is the, it's the big one. My crocodile, um, it doesn't have the arm reach necessarily to get to the middle. And so this one has the deep hole. I will post it down below. It is an Amazon linked item if you'd like to buy it. Do you need it? No. You're going to see me um, with my pages use and all, and it all works perfectly fine. So here I am getting out. There's the normal crocodile right there. It came in this little case that holds a whole bunch of eyelets. So I'm pulling out some that uh, will go that haven't been used since I bought the, the thing like 15, 20 years ago. I don't even know. Um, so it's time they get used. And so I'm pulling out little eyelets to do that. And then um, I'm just double checking. I'm going to put, there's one in there, I think there. There you go. So I cut out some of this, you guys. It's like it, it, literally like watching paint dry. Like I can't, I can't imagine. So I went ahead and set, uh, set that one. And then we'll go ahead and set the rest and see. Oh, see, I misspoke. This is, I am, I'm adding another piece of tape to the outside. I've decided I'm, I want to do that. So I did punch the holes first and, um, and then I'm going to go back and repunch them through this tape just so they're, um, obviously in the exact same spot. But I think I just, I don't know. I was feeling like I needed that other piece of tape. And so I added it. Yeah. And then I'll go ahead and repunch just through the tape. You obviously could tape it first. It was kind of like a, I don't know, like, do I, do I need it or not? And I decided, oh, I think I'd feel better if I had it. Right. And so, so I did that. So again, watching hole punching, I know it's incredibly stimulating, but, um, this is just kind of the process. I mean, and again, this video speeded up just a bit. And so it obviously took me, I don't know how long, you know, total to do this, but it's a fun little afternoon or evening project, right? And while you're watching a movie or, you know, watching other people create, um, I think it's a fun way to use up supplies. So and that's what we're doing. All right. So now we're all set to go ahead and make sure the eyelets are in there. I'm sorry, you guys, I did think I caught, I cut out some of this, but, um, there you go. The eyelets are in and we are ready to add our signatures. So I now have to cut down the paper to the size I want, right? So I'm remeasuring just to make sure I'm in the ballpark here. And I don't know how many pieces of paper I have. I have, um, it might be 20, it might be 10 in each signature, something of that, that sort. And I'm just going to cut those pages down, right, to, you know, to the right size. And I come out of it with this lovely pile of other strips on the right, you can see. So, uh, and you can see I pulled all sorts of patterns, you guys. You can see there's those frames and those wonky little quote boxes. I don't care because it's going to go with cards and they're not going to be in order. And it's, it's all fine. And so, and those are pieces of paper that, you know, I'm, I'm not really going to use, especially in my scrapbooking or my journaling necessarily. And so why not find a beautiful place? Okay. So obviously we cut them and now, you know, we get to fold them all, which again is, is either very, very therapeutic and you really enjoy it. And you know, you're experiencing it as you go, or it's something that is just time consuming and you got to get through. So whatever it is, um, the papers need to be folded. So hopefully it's something that you enjoy. And again, if you have a movie on or just something in the background, you just kind of, you know, you just kind of do it step by step. So folded all the pieces of paper. And now this is actually the hardest part for me. And it doesn't literally doesn't make any difference, but kind of trying to decide which, which goes where in what, um, in what signature and facing which direction, right? And so just trying to, I'm obviously counting them just to make sure. 
and I want to divide the pile in two and then and then figure out like I just don't want I don't know why because it's not like they have to go in order but I don't want all the matching pieces together and I don't want just all I don't know you know I just want it to to kind of flow so I'm going to separate them into uh, the two piles that I think work somehow in my brain and your brain would obviously make two different piles and that's fine so so there's the two piles and I'm just counting three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, maybe. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, so we're gonna pull I think one or two from that. There you go. Yep, so there's the math for you. And then they're all folded. And then you, you know, you just decide, do you want them all facing one way? Most of these, I think all of them maybe are single sided. If obviously you have double sided, but again, it just doesn't matter for this because it's just going to be filled with, um, you know, beautiful cards and notes and just fun stuff. It's not, I'm not doing anything else to these pages. It's not a junk journal or anything like that. Um, it's literally to glue cards into. So just trying to figure out kind of where I want what papers again. And why you choose something over something else, I don't know. And in that moment, you know, I'm just trying to figure out what goes, what goes where. So I've decided which, you know, papers go in which pile. I've gotten out some clips. They're all folded together. And now we're just going to put the signatures in. So there's my measuring tool again, my beautiful piece of trash paper. And uh, I'm just going to make some marks. That is a Frixon pen, you guys. Someone re recently asked me and I put it into a comment. You guys have seen me use that on a lot of things. They are erasable pens. They make them in all sorts of um, what types of pens. There's like ballpoint pens, there's gels, there's highlighters, there's markers, whatever they are. Um, but they are erasable. And that's a pro and a con, right? But I do enjoy them kind of down here because it is something that can be removable. It can be removed with the actual eraser. It's actually, um, you know, frickson is friction. And so it's actually the rubbing of the envelope, envelope the eraser onto it. 
It can also be, you know, uh, erased, if you will. That was me using air quotes for you. Uh, erased with uh, a heat gun, which you've seen me do. It can also be brought back using uh, like cold, like if you put it in the refrigerator or the freezer for a second. So that's super fun if you want to write a secret note to someone or you have a pirate in your house that leaves a treasure map or, you know, something like that or, you know, a mystery spy birthday party or something like that. Those are super ways, super fun ways to use those pens. What's not super fun, um, I will tell you is, you know, putting it all in your planner and leaving your planner in the car and it being gone. Um, so yeah, don't necessarily recommend it for that, but okay. So here's me, um, not using the crocodile. That's a, that's an all okay. From the book, um, binding kit. Uh, I can link those below again, you guys, I've linked it for a while. Um, I got mine off of Amazon. It was like eight bucks, uh, super, super affordable. So, uh, and it comes with everything you need, the all the thread and everything. So, um, made, made the holes and now I'm going to go ahead and just, um, bind these signatures. And now this is, I don't want to say the first time, but I normally, um, I normally start from the back and I have my tails. I'm looking for my journal in front of me here um, and have my tails on the outside of the journal. I can't seem to find it. I don't know if I left it upstairs. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm doing this one from the inside, which means those tails are going to be on the inside. There it is. Yeah. So uh, a lot of you like the tails on the inside. And so there I am. I'm trying it. I'm here for it. Uh, I just like to put dangles on my stuff. And so uh, I will I will put some sort of little dangle or punch or something on the ends of those that lay kind of flat, not beads, obviously. But um, a lot of people like the flat edges on the outside and not to do dangles and whatnot. So that's, I thought, you know, maybe I would try it for this book that way. So uh, go ahead and just cutting those tails just a tad. And then we're going to take the clips off and we're going to do it again. I know it's exciting. Um, just making sure it's folding and fitting, right? Sometimes you got to just kind of remind it, right? Who's, who's in charge. And so, um, get out your magic measuring tape. Okay. Put the holes where they got to go, put the marks where you want the holes and then put the holes where you want them. I know it's, it's beautifully simplistic, which kind of just is part of why it's so healing and meditative almost to kind of spend some quiet time and, and do this. I'm just using an old uh, book, obviously, uh, behind that to make sure that I don't puncture anything um, that involves, you know, a trip to the ER or something like that. Now, a lot of people I know when they put multiple signatures in their book, they'll start with the back one. Um, I obviously started with the front one. I don't know if it matters. I am not a master bookmaker, so please do not, uh, you know, cite me as your expert on any of this. But I went ahead and did the front first, and now I'm doing the second one in the back. It seems to have worked fine, but if there is a reason for it, I would love to know if any of you know if that's if that's your normal way of doing it and you have a you know, like a reason that you learned. I'd love to, I'd love to know that. There's my little book binding kit. I will link it below for you, but, um, or a similar one if I can't find that exact one, but I think, uh, I did look you guys. I looked, I went, cause I'm a hunter. I, I actually have decided that if I came from people, uh, you know, generally, generally, generationally ago, <laughs> If I had to go back and see myself, I'm pretty sure I was a hunter, not a gatherer. <laughs> Although I am a gatherer of craft supplies, um, but I'm up for the hunt, you guys. I am, which is part of why I enjoy like going to the thrift store, going to the, you know, whatever. So you guys, there's the flip through of my journal and um, it holds cards and there's an example of one. And I wasn't too sure if that was going to be the front page or not. So I waited, but that's it, you guys. Thanks for hanging out. And I hope you find something today that inspires you.